Hello, welcome to The Scale, The Scale of Justice, as I especially wish you a happy Independence Anniversary, the 61st Independence Anniversary of Nigeria. I am Femi Okewu, with the pleasure of having you around with us today. For every independence anniversary, it gives an opportunity to do some stock taking. For some people, it is celebration time. For some, it is reflection time. And for us on this scale, we just look at Nigeria and say, where are we and are we where we would wish to be? Of course, not many people would agree that this is where Nigeria ought to be after 61 years. But then there are so many factors that come together to determine how fast a nation moves in development. For us on this scale, our concern is about the justice sector. What will Nigeria have been without an arbiter organization, without an arbiter segment of government? A, government, a segment of government that looks into the problems of the society and adjudicates very objectively. Now, how objective has that segment of government been in the last 61 years? And is that segment of government itself moving fast enough? Is it moving with time? These are some of the things we shall be looking at on the scale today. And we shall be looking at that from the lenses of two major players in the segment. We have gone out to speak to learned senior advocates of Nigeria who will give us their opinion on the state of Nigeria and how helpful the justice sector or the bench or indeed the legal profession has been to our development. The historical contributions of the legal profession in Nigeria is of a mixed bag. And uh, what I mean by that is that in the beginning, when we got independence, um, the volume of work, the volume of litigations, and the quality of leaders we have on the, at the bar and on the bench had a significant marked difference 
from the quality of the bar uh, and bench we have uh, beginning from when we began what they call this uh, republic um, then the the ethics of the profession the nobility of the profession the spartan nature of our justice system were not as it is um, that we have um, allowed our political differences to uh, affect. Even during military regime, for instance, the courts were very vocal. You may recall the governor of Lagos State, Vice Chief Emeka Odumego Juku. You will recall the case of uh, uh, Seydou Garba versus Federal Civil Service Commission. Can you give us a little ingredient of those cases? So that These were cases... What those judgments? Those were cases where orders of court were not obeyed and the Supreme Court deprecated and said the rule of law no, no, any other language, whether in war time, in peace time, they speak the same language. And once the law is not obeyed, not respected, the rule of law is not followed, anarchy, chaos will take place. Our judicial officers then were not taking the violations of their orders with lightly. But today you seem to see that even when the Supreme Court of Nigeria has given a decision, the Nigerian public began to make mockery of the decisions. You may have heard of whether this one is a, a Supreme Court, this one, this one, a Supreme Court governors. Such appellation should not be found because when the court makes pronouncement, it should be final and it ought to be final. So I think that we have unwittingly allowed the Nigerian political uh, politics mm -hmm. to creep into the legal profession, where, as of today, it appears what you know does not matter. It is who you know. So the character we recruit into the legal profession from the uh, faculty of law, to law school, back into practice, who people who now worship wealth instead of the integrity has adversely affected the nobility of the legal profession. So that is why I think that the legal profession, the leadership of the legal profession, both the bar and the bench, need to go back to drawing board to restore the legal profession back to that noble position in the society. But that does not mean that our judiciary had failed. Within the excruciating circumstances they found themselves operating, I think that the judiciary is the best among the three arms of government. And that, when I talk about the judiciary, I also mean the members of the legal profession because we have code of ethics. Could Nigeria have reached its level of development without the bench, without the legal profession, without the justice sector generally? My answer straight away is no. Because the rule of law, which I would say law, is the basis and the foundation upon every society. Without the rule of law and without law, no society can stay and prosper and remain stable. Therefore, flowing from the concept of the rule of law or law, which society sits on, you have in each society, particularly now, to be more specific, our Nigeria, our great Nigeria, that we so much cherish and love, establish the arm of government, which is the judicial arm of government, with the Supreme Court and the apples. As far as I'm concerned, it is a very important arm of government, which 
operates as a stabilizing force between the other arms of government under the presidential system of government. Even in the parliamentary system of government, which we operated on independence up to the military interruption in 1967, before we brought in the presidential system in 1999, there was a judiciary, which is a separate arm, while the executive and the legislatures were fused in one of them. So that is a very important argument that the judiciary has fared so well as far as I'm concerned. Let's look back at all the tortuous times that Nigeria has had and the legal profession too uh, went through it. We, we know that uh, uh, in those days when there used, there, there used to be uh, military coups, uh, one of the first things that uh, the military would do was to pronounce some austere clauses and, uh, or suspend some parts of the constitution. Uh, how did the court cope with such a period of time. You see, when, when you look at it very well, out of the two arm, uh, three arms of government, the only arms of government that the military had not been able to effectively abrogate, although had been castrated by austere clauses, as you rightly pointed out, is the judicial arm of government. Uh, but they, and that's why I say that in the beginning, for instance, you know that uh, the, the Ladukomi case, uh, the doctrine of necessities, the Supreme Court made some pronouncements about austere clauses and decrees and declared them uh, illegal, unconstitutional, and our court did so. But the military will come around it and promulgate a decree or law to ask the jurisdiction of the court. But in most cases, the brevity and the, the intellectual capacity and sagacities of our judicial officers were brought to bear. And at the end of the day, they also make pronouncement that even the military must follow due process. That's why I mentioned the case of Lagos State Government versus uh, Chief Emeka Odumego Juku. Uh, when an order uh, was made and the legal state government flouted it and the Supreme Court did not take it kindly at that time. Uh, you cannot uh, you cannot tout a trial court and come to a higher court yeah, yeah. to seek succor yes. and to seek refuge. So at that time, uh, we, we not only did the judiciary uh, uh, back, they were also biting. There used to be a time when Nigeria was not in a democracy. How do you think that the judiciary fared at that time, particularly going by what the military at that time would do whenever they came into government, they would suspend part of the constitution and pronounce some obstacle clauses. How did the judiciary scale through periods like that? Going back into memory lane, in 1966, when the military struck, they promulgated a decree called Suspension Modification Decree, in which substantial part of the Constitution was suspended. It suspended the Parliament. It suspended the powers of exercising the executive powers, even though the executive still remain. But in a democratic manner, 
power of the executive and the legislation were suspended. Okay. Most especially the parliament's power was suspended. But the decree, which is the suspension, constitutional suspension modification decree of 1966, still left the judiciary intact with the Supreme Court still at the apex. However, the aspect relating to chapter four was suspended. Military now were ruling by decree. Even though they say you have a fundamental right, yes, the judiciary will still adapt, will still adapt how to interpret what is that your fundamental right under a military rule or military regime. But I sad to be corrected, but I must say that one right that remain most important that even if suspended, remain unsuspended, yeah. was the right to life. Yeah. But the right to freedom, which is very important, which is next to right to life, was suspended. Because if you do anything, that is what we call the decree that will just pick you and send you to jail, maybe without formal trial. Yeah. But judiciary at that time, not will stand, should try their best to ensure the enforcement of the rights of individuals under the suspended constitution. see in those judgments and which you seem to think is lacking now or which people observe is maybe lacking now is the courage of the uh, the, the judge is courage taught in law school no uh, courage is inherent in character courage is inherent in integrity courage is inherent in the man who has set himself apart our recruitment process has affected the courageous dispositions of some of our judicial officers. For instance, late Chief M.Q. Abiola said, the hands of the giver is always on top. When you beg to be made a judicial officer, and the person who helped you to make you judicial officers have issues before you, or when you are a man of shady character, you cannot withstand the temptations of money and naira, or dollars and pounds sterling, and you are a man of anything goes, and you find yourself, because of the perquisites of the office as a judicial officer, you meander your way to become a judicial officer, there is no way you can have courage. So, we need to look at the process of our recruitments. We should recruit people who have character, people who have courage, people who have integrity, people who are honest, people whose only desire to be on the bench is to do justice to all manner of persons, irrespective of whose us is God's. And those who want to go to the bench to make name, not to make money, those are people we need on the bench. Let's look at what the legal profession, the bench, can do for Nigeria, particularly when, at a time when people are asking the quality of the materials that uh, occupy offices or are practicing. Well, I, 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 I want to say and then quote from one of the legend of the legal profession of blessed memory. 
Chief wrote new laws. Chief Ganifa will be. And the rest. We have had situation whereby some of the materials we are admitting into the legal profession and putting some of them with respect to the appointed authority are not the best materials that we are putting there. Speaking for myself, I must say without any fear of contradiction that there are lawyers called to the Nigerian bar today that have no business in the legal profession. There are lawyer judges appointed to the bench who all do respect to the appointed authority have no business on the bench of the Nigerian judiciary in some of the levels of the judiciary. Gone are the days. I say lawyer privilege by the position I have today. In those days, you can beat your chest. If you read a case, you can make up your mind whether that case is good or is bad. You can give a legal opinion to your client and that legal opinion will stand. Yes. It will be very difficult if you go to court, you tell him this case we win or this case we are not likely to win. But today, I must say with all sense of especially in political matters, yes. we are having conflicting decisions and the decisions that with the greatest respect I continue to say, ought not to even come from some of our courts. What's the way out as we go into the future? The way out is for us, for our appointing authority, and for those at the highest court of the land, especially, to go back to the old days, the doctrine of judicial precedent. Let there not be conflict. What is that decision? In so so years, what was the decision of this court? The Supreme Court, before they can deviate from their previous decision, must give, will give reason. And will even um, invite Amicus Korea to address them. Why must we deviate from our previous decision? Our judiciary, especially the Apex Court, must continue to lead us to ensure that conflicting decisions, especially coming from those courts, don't happen, should not happen, and ought not to happen. And I am optimistic that under the leadership of the CJN and the National Judicial Institute, Council, Council and the fora of the Nigerian Bar Association, we can correct some of these things and agree to ensure that the judiciary remain the hope of not only the common man, the hope of every Nigerian and even the judiciary community that should have hope and confidence in our judgment and quality of judgment. That's the much we have for you on the scale today. We can't exhaust all the issues, but they will have laid the foundation for us to know that there are more areas for us to go into and uh, there are openings for the justice sector to help in moving Nigeria forward, particularly under the democracy which we operate. We'll see you again with more evolving issues in the justice sector of Nigeria.